Okay, so this is uh, a community update. So right now we have about uh, 14,000 members around Asia. And yeah, most of our members are in Hong Kong, Singapore, Malaysia, Vietnam, Australia, Cambodia, and China. And right now we have about 24 chapters. Uh, very recently, we have set up uh, Mexico and uh, Dubai chapters. So if you guys uh, would like to uh, you know, set up a business uh, over there, or you would like to uh, meet somebody uh, from Mexico or Dubai, just feel free to contact us. We will connect you with the chapter presidents over there. And this month we have added a couple of um, committee members in uh, Australia, uh, Singapore, uh, and Vietnam. And, and you can find the information um, on our website and also on our social media. So if you would like to connect with them, just feel free to let us know. And we will have our chapter presidents meet up very soon. So if you have um, any question regarding to your chapters or uh, anything you would like to bring up, feel free to contact your uh, chapter presidents and then we'll make sure um, yeah, the, your message will be heard and then we will uh, you know, um, do some improvement uh, for our community. Yeah, okay. And then you can see here is all our communities. Right now we have about 24 chapters around the world. So yeah, if you would like to connect, um, you know, one of the countries or you would like to set up a business in one of, uh, uh, you know, the chapters um, that we are located, just feel free to let us know. We are happy to connect you with the local committee members and then also the president. So they were able to help you um, to, you know, set up your business or, um, you know, connect with the local business network. So just feel free to let us know if you have any question or anything uh, you, you guys would like to do or, um, you know, any event or people you would like to meet up, just feel free to let us know or just simply PM, you know, PM me, message me. I, I think most, most of you got my uh, WhatsApp number, just feel free to WhatsApp me. And so this is the Mexico chapter that we recently set up. Um, so we have, um, we have the chapter president, uh, Look, uh, nominated already so uh, you can find the information on our website and also the Dubai chapter we just set it up uh, one week ago um, and we already started uh, doing a lot of uh, activity over there so if you would like to uh, you will be visiting Dubai or you would like to do business there just feel free to let us know and we will make sure um, we will connect you to the right people and then we will start our event for today. So, um, oh, sorry, just let me add the people in the chat room. We have, uh, um, just one second, because uh, we have some members are waiting for us to uh, put them into the, to the chat. Okay, so, um, okay, that's done. Okay, so, um, this is uh, speakers for today. Um, so uh, they all are, are committee members in Hong Kong. So we have uh, Lawrence, John, Dickie, Frankie, Wei, and uh, Sergey, if I'm not pronouncing wrong. Um, so um, each of our committee members will be, uh, we have five minutes to uh, present their companies and um, introduce themselves to us. And for, um, audience, if you would like to connect with, um, you know, our committee members, just feel free to use the chat room, uh, send the message that uh, you want to, you know, um, you want you would like to send to the speakers, or you can simply send us um, your business card, uh, we will make sure uh, we will, we connect you guys after the event. So, um, yeah, so it, it, we'll try to keep it, um, you know, interactive, and you can, um, there will be some follow up. Uh, make sure we will make sure um, there's some business activities after the event. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So uh, first up, we would like to uh, invite uh, committee member uh, Lawrence to um, introduce himself to us and uh, also introduce his business to us. Um, Lawrence, are you here? Yes. Thank you. Uh, Gary. Let me pass the. Okay. Okay, Lawrence, yes, please uh, introduce yourself to us. And then, um, yeah, you can just uh, let us know um, about your business and yeah, share more about what you do with us. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you, everyone. It's a pleasure um, connecting with everyone. I think it's my first time participating in this event. So, you know, it's good to see all the, all the faces of potential partners we can work with. 
Um, so uh, I'm Lawrence. I'm the CEO of eCargo Holdings Limited. Um, we're a Hong Kong uh, headquarter business, um, but listed in Australia. Um, and the whole, um, I guess, our business services is really an end-to-end -end, um, service provider to help brands enter um, Asia, in particular in China. And what we mean by end-to-end -end is uh, we work with brands on one end, um, the logistics and supply chain, uh, warehousing, freight, all the way to customs, importation, labeling, testing um, across multiple countries. And then we all the on other end is we help run the e-commerce um, stores for a lot of these brands and retailers, as well as act on some of them as an exclusive distributor um, to work on the B2B distribution with retailers. Um, in the middle is we provide value added services. So things like content generation, uh, digital marketing, trade marketing, uh, IT solutions, including setting up your online platform, providing an infrastructure to allow you to have full visibility of your trading. Um, we, we work on that front. So we provide really a full end to end. Um, in China is where we operate um, generally. Um, so right now our team is about 130 people. Um, majority of our team is based out of Shanghai and Shenzhen. Uh, we work across four major categories, um, fashion and apparel, food and beverages, health and supplements, and uh, beauty and personal care. Um, our brands that we work with right now are particularly um, Australian brands and also brands from the UK. Um, so some of the ones we have exclusivity on, you, you might be familiar in the kind of baby and mom category would be um, Ella's Kitchen. Um, so these kind of little baby pouches, the very colorful ones um, that we sell. Um, we also work with beverage companies like uh, Fentimans out of the UK. Um, Australia, we work with uh, Fonterra. Um, we also own uh, Metcash's export business, uh, which is one of the top three grocery chains out, um, out of Australia. Um, in terms of our distribution network, um, in China, we have over 3,000 point of sale locations um, that we can really help accelerate for any brands and retailers that want to sell product into China through offline. Uh, through online, we work with over 20 different platforms. Um, including the likes of Tmall, JD, uh, Kala, um, and et cetera. Um, we also have our own, what I call a C store network, uh, which is really a C to C um, store network, over 2,000 little mini shops or really community shops where people kind of sell to fa family and friends. So we can also push product through there. Um, outside of China, our other market that we particularly focus on is Vietnam and Cambodia. Um, so one of the brands we work exclusivity on is uh, called Blackmore's. Um, out of Australia, where we distribute their products um, into Vietnam and, and uh, Cambodia. Um, so that's kind of where um, our current service scope are. Uh, going forward, um, you know, we obviously are looking for new brands that we can take on, um, that we can continue trading for and help them sell via e-commerce or offline. Um, and so if anyone here have any brands or, or partners that are interested in working together across all our verticals, um, we'll, be, we'll be happy to, to connect. Thank you. Um, thank you, Lawrence. Um, okay, so uh, just a reminder, if um, any of you would like to connect with uh, Lawrence or other speakers, please feel free to uh, leave your message in the chat box, or you can just email us your contact and we will make sure um, your message will be sent to the speakers. So next up, we will have uh, John um, to uh, tell us about his business and what he do. Uh, John is also one of our committee members. He's um, responsible for our education, a part of the, um, the business for our community. Uh, John, are you here? Um, could you introduce yourself um, to, to us? Certainly, can you hear me? Hey, yes, we can hear you. So Wonderful, because this is the first time I, uh, I use this microphone. <clears throat> So very pleased to meet everyone uh, in this uh, fast changing time because uh, when we turn on the TV, you know, all news are changing every day. Um, um, I'm a Hong Kong native, uh, but I was uh, educated overseas for some time and then I spent a lot of my professional time in Shanghai. Uh, I was uh, actually a gamer by training, so I was managing two Nestle Pro game companies as their CEO for eight years before coming back to Hong Kong. But when I came to Hong Kong, I, I stopped doing games. I started moving into technology education. Um, so that's why eight years ago, I started this uh, company called Coding Kingdom, uh, fully financed by myself. Um, and it has uh, developed itself into one of the uh, premier private tech, ed tech companies in Asia. So what we do, we, are, uh, we do technology education for students, mainly in K-12. Uh, if you are a parent in Hong Kong for some time, perhaps you already have heard about our company and perhaps even have attended our classes. 
uh, one of our centers in uh, in Cyberport actually is home to a lot of uh, 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 kids and uh, sons and daughters of a lot of celebrities. So if you want to get some autobiographies of uh, of uh, some of the uh, movie stars, you can actually visit there around four o'clock every day. <laughs> Um, so um, that's something that we've been we've been empowering young people with their technology. We teach them how to do uh, uh, coding, uh, and they're moving into computer science education. Which we, we even uh, teach them how to uh, take some professional examinations, uh, international certifications from Microsoft, um, and then we empower them with technology. The key is not to uh, 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 make them a programmer. Uh, it's not the point. The point is to uh, enable them to recognize. And appreciated the beauty of technology with all its limitations. So basically, it's not a vocational training school. Basically, we are trying to open up the eyes of young people to the beauty of technology. And more recently, in the past four years, we've also moved into uh, education technology, where we are doing a lot of uh, uh, AR VR solutions for schools and NGOs. One of the uh, projects that we've done for uh, four years ago, which actually was ranked one of the top ten projects by the Education Bureau in Hong Kong. Uh, is one that is helping schools to uh, learn Chinese history and uh, history in general with an ex, uh, with an AR platform. So these days we are uh, also following the trend and helping schools to uh, uh, create immersive learning experience in the metaverse. Uh, one of the, the key things that we are doing very excitingly these days is to help schools to explore how to create uh, new content to be delivered in the immersive world and uh, along with the hardwares like the Oculus Quest and whether and how to create uh, immersive learning contents. So it's a very big fun type of work. Um, so uh, love to connect to, to you all, uh, whether you are a student, whether you are a parent. Uh, uh, this is something that we really, really enjoy uh, doing for the next generation. Yeah, thank you, John. Um, yeah, so just a reminder, if you would like to connect with John, just feel, feel free to send us the message. Uh, you can message on the, put a message on the chat box or you can um, just uh, email us. Um, okay, so next up, we will have uh, Dickie. Um, Dickie, is, um, his business is about uh, couponing and his, I believe his uh, company is about to go IPO. So yeah, so I, um, there's a lot uh, we can learn from Dicky. Uh, Dicky, please uh, introduce yourself to us. Yeah, hi everyone. Hey, hey Gary, can I share in the PowerPoint here actually? Or... Oh, sure, sure. Um, just one second. Uh, okay, so you should be able to share your PowerPoint now, I think. Okay. Yeah, we, we can see it. Okay, hi everyone. Yeah, this is Dicky from Massofa. Yeah, it's also the first time I joined the the CEO of online event, okay? So um, yeah, my company is uh, Massify, okay? Actually, Messo means it's an Italian. It means a connect, okay? FY means for you. So which the, the meanings of my company name is uh, connect for you, which uh, we have the merchant to, to find the, the, the consumer, all right? So, uh, okay, actually uh, we, we set up in a 2014, it's almost eight years right now. So we are actually, uh, a coupon platform, we aim to be the best uh, uh, coupon platform, digital coupon platform in the world. So we provide a coupon as a uh, as service. Uh, uh, so we, which is actually a SaaS model that we are doing. So uh, we are end-to-end -end platform. We do everything for digital coupon actually. So uh, yeah, I don't talk too much on this. Uh, the reason why we, uh, we provide this as solution um, what we do actually, we, we help the merchant to do coupon business, okay? On high level, we do five things, okay? First is uh, we help the merchant to create digital coupon. Uh, second is uh, we help them to distribute the coupon through uh, a lot of different channels, some of uh, uh, maybe through social media or through our connected channels. And the third one is uh, we help them to redeem their coupon, all right, uh, with, with or without POS, okay? And the fourth thing is that we help them to track the coupon so that uh, they can have the big data to do their marketing, like uh, who, who use the coupon, when they use it, uh, uh, where they use the coupon, what product they use it on, something like that. And the last thing is that we measure the coupon performance. So uh, they know how many go to their coupon name, how many people actually willing to download their coupon or buy their coupon, how many people actually redeem their coupon. So based on this uh, information, they can, uh, 
we find they can uh, modify their uh, coupon campaign in the future. So uh, I guess the good thing of uh, digital coupon is uh, quite obvious. So uh, it's a cheaper, okay, cost wise, and also uh, it's a lot faster. And uh, as I mentioned, the good thing is that we, uh, we have the merchant to collect the big data to do a future marketing, okay? Yeah, and uh, this is uh, very technical. Uh, I don't want to go into details. So just uh, two areas I want to talk about is uh, we, uh, we are a little bit different. We are close, uh, we are open platform. When I say open platform, which means that uh, our function uh, is not just running on our system only. Actually, our function can be running on other, other people or third parties system, okay? Because uh, we connect with them uh, through API. So when you see here, I, I see multi-channels, which means uh, we, uh, we, we use API to connect with a lot of different channels to help our merchants to sell their voucher. For example, Starbucks, uh, they are our, our customer, okay? So we help Starbucks to distribute their coupon to our channel, okay? When I say channel, one of our channel uh, is uh, Alipay, okay? Which means uh, when you see, uh, going forward, when you see uh, uh, Starbucks coupon on Alipay app, actually it's uh, behind the scene is our connection, okay? We help our merchant to, to distribute their coupon on our builder channel. So now we have uh, not a lot of big, because we're still be building the channel. I guess we have somewhere around 10 channels right now, including um, WeChat, Alipay, uh, we are connecting open I, I, I will, I will, I will explain more later on this part, okay? So which means that the function, our coupon actually not just one on our system, actually can one on other third parties system as well. And another part is uh, the payment gateway. Actually, uh, when we say coupon, it's not just a 10% discount, that kind of uh, uh, discount coupon. Most of our coupon actually uh, means voucher. Okay, we are helping our merchant to sell their voucher to the end consumer. So when, when you have to sell the coupon online, which means that it will involve payment gateway. So this is why we connected with a lot of payment gateway. This is just part of them. I guess we connected somewhere around 15 different payment gateway already. The reason why we got to connect with a different payment gateway because we are global platform. Uh, different countries, uh, they will have a different uh, payment gateway preference. Okay, as you can see here, some of them you may not know, some of them you do. I guess Stripe you may know, okay, or uh, maybe uh, you know uh, Alipay or WeChat, but some of them you, you may not know, like uh, AdGen, you may not know this one used by Korean company a lot, or Miss, this one used by a, a Thailand company a lot. Brain tree used by Taiwan company. Because uh, when, when it comes to different merchants, they may have different preference. Okay, so this is why we have to connect with a lot of different third party payment gateway to help our merchant to process the payment. Apart from uh, connect to the, the third party, actually we can also connect with uh, 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 the merchant's the internal system. We can connect with ELP, connect with uh, POS, connect with CRM. So uh, like uh, one of our big customer is a Maxim Sport. We connected to all of their system already. So this is why I always say, uh, I believe uh, because we work, we work with Maxim for over five years now. So I believe uh, everyone used our product that you guys don't know because uh, we are behind the scene company. We connected with the POS. So when you process the coupon, even the print coupon, we are supporting them right now. So for the far, uh, past five years, if you have ever bought anything from Starbucks, I mean, regarding voucher or coupon, actually they are using our system already. But we are behind the scene company, we connected with the POS, that's why you don't know. As long as they use the, the, the scanner from the POS to scan the, the coupon, actually they are using our platform already. But you may not know that, okay? Yeah, this is uh, some of our, our channels we connected. One of the biggest that uh, we connect them may be um, Alipay, as you can see, and uh, Jigaon is actually a uh, Hong Fuk Tong's uh, online shop, a uh, good buyer, Gulu. And uh, some of them are from, mainly of them now is from Hong Kong, okay? And uh, two big one actually from China, okay? We connect them with uh, High Speed Railway uh, and also a eBuy. eBuy is kind of like Jekyll. They connect with 70, 70 banks in China, okay? So their consumer base is very huge. They have uh, over 1 billion uh, consumer base, but uh, unfortunately because of COVID, uh, uh, Chinese uh, tourists cannot come. So it's kind of stopped 
here right now, but hopefully when, when it, we open, uh, we can uh, pick up very soon. Yeah, so this is our traction, okay? We, uh, after almost uh, eight years, actually we are Google number one. Uh, when you search uh, on Google, on uh, digital coupon platform, we are, we are number one. And uh, we handle almost uh, 300 million coupons already. Okay, so uh, in terms of um, amount, like I said, we handle a lot of vouchers. So uh, we handle over 30 billion Hong Kong dollar already. Okay, so it's not our money, it's uh, our merchant's money. Okay, we are just helping them to manage this, uh, this voucher only. So uh, all over the world, we have over 10,000 merchants using our tools and uh, for our capacity, we can handle uh, 10,000 coupon transactions per second right now. Okay, yeah, this is the market size. Okay, this is uh, some of our customer. Uh, Okay, they are, they, are, they are already using our product, okay? I guess most of them you guys know. Uh, okay, some of them are from Maxim's group. Another big group that they are using us is uh, Hyatt, uh, okay? We got a global contract with Hyatt. So uh, going forward, uh, uh, all, all Hyatt hotel worldwide, around 1,000 hotel would use our platform to sell their, their Hyatt vouchers, uh, okay? And... Uh, yeah, this is also um, yeah some of our customer they're using our platform. Yeah, this is uh, some of our distributor because, like I said, we are global platform. We uh, we have distributed other countries. Uh, okay, now I, I got five uh, Okay, uh, from England, uh, Taiwan, U.S., Thailand, and uh, Indonesia as well. Yeah, this is some of the 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 award that we got from uh, from. From other from, from a lot of different countries, okay. Half of them from Hong Kong, uh, half of them from overseas. Uh, worth to mention is that uh, we got one from government two years ago, okay. And uh, we also got two awards from a uh, Silicon Valley for those uh, technology uh, creation, innovation, something like that. Yeah, that's uh, pretty much uh, our company background. Thanks, Gary. Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Dickie. Um, well, one question, Dicky, are you still uh, doing fundraising for, for your company? Yeah, we are doing a kind of uh, PIPO fundraising right now. Yeah, Ooh. for my company. Yeah, yeah so I, I think we have uh, uh, some of our uh, members are investors here. So if um, anybody's uh, interested to know more, uh, please feel free to let us know. We will make sure I will connect you with uh, Dicky after the event. Um, yeah. So, yeah, so next up, we will have uh, Wei. Um, he is in the... Um, Pop Pet, uh, property technology. Uh, Wei, can you? Uh, are you here? Um, can you? Um, yes, I am here. Can you all hear me? Yep. Yep. Oh, uh, you you have a. <laughs> a new... I look. I look. I look different <laughs> it's because yeah. of the. Uh, what happened in Hong Kong is that we can't go out to have a haircut, so that's why I grow my hair and uh, and it, I also grow my beard here as well. <laughs> So before I forget, I really want to uh, get engaged with John. Uh, I, I like his uh, presentation and uh, because it will also come from a similar uh, background I, I share with you uh, uh, now. Sorry, guys, I have, I have to do it very quickly because I have another call um, right after this. Um, so let me share with you my background. Uh, I actually uh, I have similar background with... Uh, as John, uh, I studied computer science and I have been in IT uh, industry for 25, maybe close to 30 years. And, uh, and after that, uh, I uh, don't look old, that old, uh, to be honest. Um, but, and I, I switched to another industry is because I, uh, lived, when I lived in Shanghai uh, working for this IT company, and I was thinking that one day if I move back to Hong Kong, what can I do? I, I don't really understand the latest technology anymore. So it's uh, when, uh, when, when Dickie was explaining all this electronic coupon thing is kind of new to me. So <laughs> I don't know if I can follow all this. So I made a decision and uh, I came back to Hong Kong and study and uh, I got my uh, property. Uh, license here. So I, uh, I'm i a founder and uh, a CEO of a, uh, an agency company. Uh, we started to do, um, you know, to, to, um, to sell uh, UK properties. Uh, and until now, uh, we expanded our territories. We sell, uh, you know, the properties in Japan and Malaysia, Cambodia. 
uh, unfortunately, because of COVID, we kind of like stopped for a while and we started, we changed our direction. We started to do the business for local uh, properties in Hong Kong as well. Um, what, what I see about this uh, is that I, I really want to use my, um, uh, my background and my experience and the knowledge especially in the, uh, I'm quite strong in, in the academic background and innovation area, and of course the IT area. I, I'm gonna use this to uh, you know, make some uh, difference here in the, um, uh, the property or the real estate uh, capacity or the arena. Because what I see in the future is that it's not the traditional way we deal uh, with, with all these you know, property transactions, where we, go somewhere to find a, a shop there, center line or whatever, and go down and see a client, I uh, see an, an agent and, you know, what have you got? I, I want to sell this. I want to buy one like this. In the future, what I see is that uh, it's, it's more virtual. Um, and, and eventually I see that I'm an agent and eventually I see that agent will be, will be gone. I don't, I don't see why we need, <laughs> we need agents, as, although I'm an agent. So this is kind of like the direct direction that uh, based on that direction, I'm trying to build different uh, platforms um, to, especially in Hong Kong, to, 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 to make it easier for the agents, um, the landlords, uh, the buyers um, and tenants and all these people to make it easier um, to, to trade basically. So um, this is a, a very small portion of the prop tech uh, industry. So uh, I, I actually had a discussion with Gary uh, maybe about three or four months ago is another, we talked about another prop tech project, which is more like uh, a construction project. And that particular prop tech projects, I'm not really involved because I don't really have that background. So this is what we are, I'm doing. Um, so, um, at the same time, I can tell you, I'm actually trying to get engaged with my uh, university, uh, previous uh, university, and trying to be a coach and kind of helping them to teach uh, some of the new students. So I, I wish me good luck if I can, you know, can be successful. Uh, it's like uh, what I think before I joined this club, I really think what I really want to do is to share my knowledge, especially in the innovation area to share with you guys, um, especially in the uh, business model, um, design thinking, uh, strategy in that particular areas and storytelling Then I'm quite familiar with. Uh, I'm, I'm really um, happy and willing to share all this knowledge and the experience with you guys. So um, wish me good luck and uh, hopefully I can, uh, <laughs> and. Uh, and build up my more knowledge and share with you guys in that capacity. So innovation, <laughs> thank you. Oh, thank you, Wei. Um, yeah, wish you good luck and hope to uh, see you again soon, um, you know, in person. <laughs> yeah, okay. absolutely. Yeah, so next up we have uh, uh, Sergey. Um, uh, are you here? Um, so Sergey is uh, one of my committee members and he's the company is in HR technology. Hi, Gary. Yes, I'm here. Oh, hi. So I will pass it to you. So please introduce yourself to us. Thank you very much, Gary. Hi, everyone. I'm pleased to connect with you all through this community. My name is Sergey Mack. Uh, I know my surname sounds Cantonese. In fact, I was born in Kazakhstan. A um, long time ago, most of my life, I lived in the United Kingdom. And 10 years ago, I moved to Hong Kong, so that's where I'm based now. Um, I am a founding partner and uh, uh, currently APAC CEO of Daxtra Technologies. Uh, Daxtra is a company that we founded uh, exactly 20 years ago um, in Scotland, in Edinburgh. Um, we, we, we started as a spin out from the University of Edinburgh's AI department. Uh, so as such, we specialize in delivering high tech, uh, robust automation solutions to enterprises uh, to automate their recruitment, talent acquisition, and certain HR processes. Uh, our technology is based on a, a very interesting academic research in the field of natural language processing. Uh, that is a field that 
um, enables computer systems, very advanced computer systems, to literally understand unstructured text. Uh, so what we do, we analyze vast volumes of our clients' uh, resume and jobs data. Uh, we uh, um, uh, uh, identify factual information in resumes, we identify factual information in jobs, and then we marry the two together, essentially uh, enabling uh, very robust and uh, high accuracy matching uh, using uh, various uh, machine learning algorithms. Um, we, we service customers across the world. We have eight offices across the world. Our typical clients would be medium to large size uh, staffing and recruitment companies, including quite a few in Hong Kong, uh, as well as large corporations that receive vast volumes of incoming applications. Uh, just to give you an idea, Huawei uh, gets upwards of 2 million applications per year. Google gets around the same. Uh, so you can imagine that to digest this kind of data, uh, you would require a small army of administrators. And our technology is capable of di di digesting that data, uh, making some sense out of it. And it's also capable of doing it across a variety of languages because natural language processing by definition is very language dependent. So we started with English language and then as we started winning more business and larger customer, larger accounts labels, then uh, our requirements were shaping up to uh, also be able to do it in, in not only in English, but also in Chinese, in French, in Japanese, in Bahasa and so on. So currently we support over 40 languages in which documents can be written. Um, uh, we in Hong Kong, we, Hong Kong is our APAC uh, headquarters. So from here, we service our clients in uh, across the region, really, uh, from from India on the west, all the way all the way to Japan on the east, and Australia and New Zealand down south. Uh, our typical clients would be uh, some recognizable names would be Michael Page, Robert Walters, Hayes. Uh, some major job boards, and also corporations such as uh, Crystal Group in Hong Kong, and also internationally, any resume submitted to, for instance, Apple, Google, LinkedIn, Twitter, will go through our systems. So that's in a nutshell about us. Um, I am in central Hong Kong. I'm available to any inquiries. If you have any questions, I guess Gary can share my, my contact details with you. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Sergey. Um, yes, uh, if you have any question or you would like to connect with Sergey after this event, just feel free to let us know. Um, we will make sure your message will be sent to uh, speakers. Um, um, yeah, so just feel free to email us or just leave your message in the chat box. And next up, we will have uh, Frankie. Uh, Frankie is a legal advisor for our uh, community and he's uh, very active um, in uh, Asia. So Frankie, uh, could you please introduce yourself to us? Okay, thanks Gary and thanks HSCEO's invitations to be one of the speakers of today's uh, web uh, webinar, maybe I say. Okay, I'll try to keep it short. Um, I'm Frankie Fong. I'm a lawyer and a partner from uh, some lawyers. Uh, personally, I'm a commercial lawyer doing contracts, doing M&A transactions, and uh, doing all kinds of company law advisory. And Apart from that, in recent, in recent years, I also have interest in family trust. So I get the trust and estate petitioners qualifications from the STEP, the Society of Trust and Estate Petitioners in UK. And then for my law firm as some lawyers, uh, basically we provide a, a wide range of legal services in Hong Kong. Apart from commercial corporate finance, we also provide uh, litigations uh, services, civil litigations, criminal litigations. We do convincing, uh, wills, probate, and trust. And also we have a, a strong China practice right now. And then because we have a joint venture law firm in uh, China, in Nansha, uh, Guangzhou with a Macau and a uh, Guangzhou law firm, we also do uh, low trialization services like low trip public and uh, Chinese low trializations. And regarding our presence, apart from Hong Kong and the Greater Bay Area in Guangzhou, we also have associations with law firms uh, like in uh, Shanghai, in Taiwan, in Macau, and also various European countries. And we are developing into a new practice area we call the uh, new economy sectors. We try to help the startups and the technology companies. In fact, we have some works related to Science Park and uh, some NGOs, and also some universities to provide some webinars to the uh, startup owners. 
as well as some free consultations to them. And also geographically, we are also looking for more uh, associations with law firms or lawyers in Asia countries. So that's my presentations for myself. Thanks, uh, Gary. Uh, thank you, thank you. Um, so uh, that is uh, all the introduction uh, for our speakers for today. Um, so actually we have a few questions from our audience. Um, so the first question is about, um, has the pandemic had a positive or a negative effect on your business? And how, how have you managed it? So um, perhaps we have uh, Lawrence to, um, yeah, to answer this question. So, um, so is the pandemic affecting your business? Is it in a positive way or negative way? Um, yeah, I think it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's an interesting question to answer. It's both negative and positive um, because of our vertical um, that we service in. So from a positive wise, um, logistics um, has been a, a more vibrant um, service in terms of the um, revenue that we're able to generate given the short shortage of um, shipping and freight um, providers. Um, so from the last two years with the pandemic, um, as you might know, logistic fees wise have gone up quite significantly, especially coming out of China um, towards other countries. We're talking about a typical container you made cost three, 4,000 US, um, all the way upwards to about 20,000 US for a container during the whole pandemic situation. So um, that one definitely did benefit the business, but from a negative side, um, you know, with that, there's also shortage. Um, so getting product on time um, and, and as a trading business did affect um, some of our business in terms of what we can actually sell in a, in a, as a timing basis. Uh, more recently uh, with Hong Kong and China um, situation in March, um, it did affect us um, because if you look at it, a lot of our trades that we do online and offline requires cross-border coming out of Hong Kong. And when the border for cross-border trucks shut down, over the last four, six weeks, um, all our orders have been uh, stuck. We can't even move it into China. So it has created some uh, uh, disruption in our business, um, especially now across Shanghai and Shenzhen, there's lockdowns and that's where most of my operations is as well. Um, but we're, we're managing it through. Um, you know, it's a situation we have to um, uh, kind of work, work against, but um, you know, that's, that's one of the effects during the pandemic for us. Okay, thank you, Lawrence. Um, so the next question is for John. Um, moving forward, how will you adapt your business operation in response to COVID-19 and its associated impacts? Uh, given um, your business uh, used to be face-to-face, -face, mainly face-to-face. -face. Um, yeah, so um, the good question is for you, John. Thank you. Um, I think uh, like many enterprises in Hong Kong, we've been struggling with this uh, pandemic. Actually, this struggle began uh, as early as the middle of 2019 when we have the uh, social unrest and that has uh, have had very bad uh, effect on the, my business. I think the good thing, of course, is uh, after the pandemic, in which we are still, you know, struggling, uh, one big awakening has been the uh, use of online learning in my space. Um, I think in the past, a lot of people were, were trying to push uh, online learning uh, in schools and in the private sector, and it hasn't been very successful. But after the pandemic, I think most of the people, workers alike, teachers alike, students alike, they all recognize the potential, in fact, the immense potential of online learning. And that's why this is something that we are working very hard on uh, exploring uh, the potential of education in the metaverse. And that is something that we are very busy working on. So I think, um, of course, in the past three years, we have had some skirmishes in our PNL. And uh, I'm sure that has been shared by most of our fellow members in Asia CEO. Uh, but like many difficulties, there is always uh, uh, a new landscape uh, at the corner of the road. Uh, I see very good uh, potential in my space. A lot of things are being developed in the metaverse. Um, of course, it's, it's a long struggle. Uh, it's not something that uh, would completely turn uh, things around, uh, but I think it, it is going to be a, a tremendous uh, gameplay for all kinds of businesses. In my case, uh, education, people are already thinking about how to develop uh, 3D modeling, all kinds of new contents, uh, creating new kinds of learning experiences, and then extend it into the corporate world in terms of corporate training, uh, training for the doctors, all kinds of training in a way that is nowhere experienced before. 
uh, with technology. You know, it happened that I was a gamer and I find that my game technology knowledge actually is very, very useful these days because whatever industry you are in, whether that is sports, whether that is education, whether that is entertainment, these new trends are all driven by game technologies. And that, that is the interesting thing that I can share with most of you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, John, uh, for your sharing. Um, so the, we have a next question for uh, Sergei. Um, what concern do you have about your business as we proceed through reopening, recovery, and continued operations during the COVID pandemic? What concern? Interesting question, but I think my concern will probably be also seconded by many other businesses. The main concern is how soon we can get out of it. Uh, although uh, we, I guess, uh, um, had a lighter impact on our business by the pandemic than some other, in particular retail, for instance, or other business to consumer operations, uh, we, because we deliver automation. Now, when we observed that in 2020, a number of our clients downsized their workforces, then someone or in our case, something needed to uh, uh, help businesses to continue maintaining the, the, the processes. So that's where our automation became particularly uh, useful. But of course, uh, on the other hand, uh, some of our clients went out of business because of COVID. So that is a very negative impact, of course, on our P&L and, and in general on, on markets, on, in, on the industries. Um, so, um, yeah, I guess the, 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 the main concern is uh, I hope that uh, with uh, the current Omicron variant being lighter than the previous ones, I hope that this is the last one and we'll, we'll just very, very quickly shut the door on it and move on. Okay, thank you. Thanks again for your response to the question. Um, so the next question is for Dickie. Um, are you concerned about the possibility that your customers and your clients' habits are shifting more toward e-commerce, uh, given um, your business are uh, mainly focusing uh, on providing coupons to the retailers? So um, yeah, so that's the question for Dickie. Okay, um, actually, um... I wouldn't say concern. Uh, I, we, are, we are actually looking forward to this change. Okay, because now actually because of um, COVID, uh, uh, people cannot go out, which, uh, which makes people want to, want to do business online, which is good for us because we are digital coupon platform, okay? Because people want to do things online, which is actually a good thing to us. So this is why I said that uh, we are looking forward to that. In the long run, this is a good thing to us. It helps to move the digitalization a lot more faster than before. Okay, that's one thing. And another thing is, uh, it's also a good impact to us is that uh, because traditional way, if a physical coupon, um, they they would uh, because it's it's paper and uh, it it involve uh, it involve a uh, human touch, which would convey virus. So this is an another driving force. For the market to change right now it's not just because they they cannot go out okay it's also uh, because uh, the merchant they they want to really move from the print coupon they don't want to use it anymore because now if with the pin coupon uh, it would uh, convey virus okay so this is another driving force for us okay so uh, this is why in the long run it's a good thing to us a lot merchant is now even our existing merchant or some new merchant, they, they, they want to totally get rid of a physical coupon anymore. Okay, and they want to do it digital coupon. This is another reason why uh, they, they want to do it right now. It's not just because people cannot go out, it's because of the Conway virus. So for me, okay, for my business, I'm not sure about, uh, about other business, but for my business, actually it's not a concern. Actually, we are actually looking forward to see these changes. And uh, it would help us to grow our business, actually. Uh, thank you, Dickie, uh, for your response to the question. Um, okay, so the last question is for Frankie. Um, so what learning or advice should CEO look at given this challenging time and the pandemic? So Dickie, can you, uh, Frankie, can you, um, yeah, just a uh, response to this question? Okay, I think, um... As a CEO or a management partner of the firm, I think what we can do now is to plan what to do after the uh, gates are opened. 
Uh, for example, um, for us, for example, we need to plan about our human resources. For example, uh, whether we should recruit uh, more lawyers at the moment and which practice areas uh, that uh, we need to recruit. And also, we also can also think about to plan after the gates are opened. Uh, we can think about whether we can visit some lawyers and law firms uh, overseas. Because during this uh, COVID period, we have a uh, 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 through Zoom to meet many lawyers uh, overseas in Asia and uh, even go to the South America in Chile and also some Eastern European uh, countries like Romania. Okay, um, so maybe we need to plan about uh, what to do uh, after uh, the COVID. And because I expect that the legal cases will increase a lot uh, after the COVID. So I think we need to well plan uh, what to do after uh, the COVID is over. So that we can take the uh, immediate steps to, to do what we want to do. For example, I noticed there's one participant uh, here is uh, Brian from uh, Thailand. And um, he's a lawyer. And I also threw ACICO to know Brian. And then uh, during this uh, period, uh, we do Zoom and WhatsApp to each other. We care each other's situations. And also I actually refer our legal cases to Brian. Uh, to conduct some legal, uh, uh, some land search in Bangkok for a case in Hong Kong. So I, I really look forward to visit Brian or other lawyers uh, overseas after the COVID. So I think the advice is to plan and not to wait until the end of the COVID. Oh, thank you, Frankie, uh, for answering this question. Um, yes, so this is our panel discussion for today. And before we finish the event, I would like to uh, introduce uh, Singapore, uh, no, not Singapore, uh, Shanghai Chapter's President, uh, Dr. Samson, um, to all of our members here. Um, as you know, most of our members, uh, we have business in Shanghai, so it would be good to uh, get to know about Dr. Samson. Dr. Samson, are you here? Yes, I'm here. Uh, please do introduce yourself to us. Hi, guys. Uh, wonderful. It's very pleased to meet you guys. Um, and yeah, I'm a uh, now I'm in Hong Kong, but I'm based in Shanghai for the past 20 years. And, um, uh, and I, my, my started off with the uh, real estate capital fund investment in China um, for 20 plus years, uh, mostly in, 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 um, in Shanghai business. And uh, we found uh, OCA Hub um, six years ago, and uh, we, we, we figured out you know, my experience. And I think everybody who have done China business and uh, mainland China business, we have ex experience. And why it's so hard to deal with the uh, uh, local business people? Why it's so hard to understanding the laws, regulation, and uh, and the business conducting the the how the the how can I motivate the people? How can I uh, partner with the local uh, network? How can I get tapped into it? Uh, it just happened that my my network and and we've been in in Shanghai for twenty years. Figure out oh we, I, I should should be able to share that. So ever since I'm I'm, uh, um, uh, I'm still a, a vice chairman of the Hong Kong Chamber in, in Shanghai, um, and Gary and I we met like uh, when he when he started Asia CEO we've been good friends we talked about how can we help uh, more uh, people around the world can do business with China and we make business more successfully uh, not just the surface but it's actually uh, in depth. Uh, um, involvement or, or, or investment in, 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 in Shanghai or in, in mainland. Uh, I think, um, uh, as we all know, um, uh, we could talk more about the, the, um, uh, the, the business opportunity and met the people. So that's why um, um, uh, uh, April 8th, um, we start off a, a Shanghai chapter uh, webinar. Uh, we will have uh, about we have totally about uh, fourteen committee members. Uh, so we're going to have six to eight committee members. Hopefully, we could able to share all from different industry. Um, and and myself and uh, uh, we would love to work with the um, and and with different HSCO chapters, friends, and and doing business. Um, and and uh, myself have uh, seven, six seven years ago I started up a, a OCA hub and it's a uh, O two O. Um, online, uh, offline incubation and uh, business service uh, network platform. Um, it, it, ever since in, in, it's, it's been, it's been uh, uh, put together, the fund capital investing in the, in the overseas Chinese who are doing business in China. And we got local company that, that connected with the technology. Um, and we, we, we fund uh, the, um, 
the startup uh, competition uh, in 2019, and we fund the the um, the business matching event. And now um, we we have a small group of the uh, community um, in in local um, um, Shanghai, and, and so hopefully we we um, uh, want to with Gary is. Um, to bring more business to around the HSCO with the with the uh, um, uh, um, the, the uh, uh, Yangtze Delta area and then with uh, lead by so the, the, that area is with the 250 million population with a, a nearly 25 percent of, of uh, China GDP and you don't have to go anywhere else of course with the big uh, Great Bay area we've got chapter president for, so with Great Bay area and the and the and the Yangtze Delta. Uh, it, it, it contributes about one third of the China economy. So um, those are the, uh, are the in depth, the, the how we can do that, how we can tap into that. And, and this is the, the next part that Gary and I, we would like to, uh, for the uh, Asia Seal global chapters, um, uh, we look forward to organize maybe three to four, uh, a, business, a, a very sincere business trip to, to Shanghai and, and, and come to visit our potential investor, partner, uh, they, they want to buy it. They just want to buy it. More people want to get to partnership and knowledge. And, 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 um, and we, 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 of course, we now all speaking, speaking English, all this in the, in the medium platform. But uh, as, as we all know, uh, doing business in China, you need WeChat. We will use the WeChat uh, meeting room. We, we go to uh, um, all the Chinese um, uh, networking facilities. And, and this is how we see the, the meaningful part of the Asia CEO. We get all these people with the multi-language and, and, and super helpful. So we, I look forward to working with all of you guys and, and anything you need help, uh, let me know. And, and I'm, I'm based in, I'm going back to, to Shanghai in, um, uh, in April anyway. Um, so hopefully this is how we see it. And, and a few things we wanna share is a lot of people worry about the COVID and, and I think uh, um, the, 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 uh, the other part of the world, um, uh, as we see other country, they they already learned to deal with the the, the pre assistant co assistant of the the virus and and, and getting to normal. Uh, Shang, uh, Hong Kong is parting in between, and, and mainland purpose was uh, with the, of course we could talk more about it in, in April eighth, but uh, most likely we're going to have a, a progressively uh, open and and how that open that will build up a super super business opportunity for everyone, particularly for the um, Asia CEO committee members around the world. Thank you, Gary. Thank you, guys. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sampson. Um, uh, HSCO committee and Dr. Sampson is going to launch a survey uh, for our members to, um, you, you know, to get to know about how to do business in China. So uh, uh, Dr. Sampson is, um, we, we, is organizing it and we should have the survey for our members um, very soon. So um, yeah, so I, 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 I invited Dr. Sampson to, um, to this, webinar because uh, Dr. Samson is uh, one of the member uh, you should go to if you you are planning to do business in China. So a lot of our members um, in the past, uh, they have difficulty in, uh, you know, setting up business in China. So luckily we have Dr. Samson. In Shanghai, more area. <laughs> so if you guys are planning you know, to- in, in Soviet China, we got more of a good lawyers and in the big great area chapter, yeah. but in, in Shanghai region, Yang, uh, you know, um, so I'm, 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 I'm here for you guys. Yeah, yeah. So if anybody would like to connect with uh, Dr. Samson or uh, would like to meet up with him later in uh, Shanghai, just feel free to uh, let us know. You can email me, WhatsApp me, or you can uh, just uh, send a message in the chat box in um, this uh, Zoom uh, webinar. Um, yeah, so thank you, Dr. Samson. And lastly, I would like to uh, share our upcoming events. Um, so here we go. Okay, so um, here is our upcoming event. So we have a lot of events um, coming up in April and May. So uh, make sure um, you attend um, our upcoming events. So to connect more people, uh, more business leaders. Um, yeah, so if you would like to, um, have any question or you would like to um, join our event as one of the speakers, just feel free to let us know. And yeah, so thank you for attending our event today. So if you would like to connect to our committee members, our speakers, um, or our chapter presidents, please feel free to uh, email me or WhatsApp me. Um, yeah, so we are always here to support you. 
Um, so thank you everybody for um, spending one hour with us today. Uh, any question, just uh, feel free to let us know and we'll make sure your message will be sent to our speakers after this event. So thank you everybody and have a good evening. Thank you, bye-bye. Thank you, Gary, thanks, Gary. Bye -bye. Thank you, bye-bye. Bye, thank you. Thank you, Gary, bye-bye. Bye-bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye -bye. Bye -bye,